Hey, welcome to another Flare Court Media Whatever Wednesday. I'm Jason, and a Whatever Wednesday is where we focus on things other than content creation, so more of content. Today it is 4.30 in the morning, and I just got done editing a video, and I figured I would run out and try to see the comet that is in the sky right now. It's July, well, morning of July 10th. This comet, C slash 2020 F3 Neowise, uh, was found earlier this year, and it's turned out to be brighter than most people thought. It is a, the last couple days, been, I think, around a magnitude 3, and a magnitude 6 or lower, you can see with your naked eye, and then a magnitude, well, 6.5 to 10, you need binoculars for. So, this should still be visible. The main concern is that here is getting closer to the horizon, and the sun, you know, as the sun comes up, the comet's going to be intersecting with that rising sun, and it's going to be harder to see. I'm currently headed out to a lake where it's nice and dark. I need to look to the northeast to see this near the horizon. The comet has already reached its perihelion, which is the closest it's going to get to the sun in its orbit, and it's on its way back out to its aphelion, which is the furthest way it's going to get. Now, it started at about 544 astronomical units, However, the gravitational assist it just got from the sun is going to send it out even further to 720 astronomical units, or AUs. And one AU is the average distance from the sun to the Earth. But what does that mean in context so we can understand? So this comet originated in the Kuiper Belt, or more specifically, the scattered disk portion of the Kuiper Belt. Some people separate them into two different things. Anyway, the Kuiper Belt proper is 30 to 50 astronomical units. And Neptune is the beginning of the Kuiper Belt at 30 AU. The scattered disk portion extends from 50 AU all the way out to 1000 AU. This is a logarithmic scale, so each mark is 10 times further. So this comet is headed back out to somewhere around here. Again, what does that mean? Well, we can look at the most famous Kuiper Belt object that we know of, which is Pluto. So let's take a look at Pluto's orbit. So this blue line is Neptune's orbit, which, like I said, is the beginning of the Kuiper Belt at about 30 AU. Now, Pluto has this elliptical orbit that sends it anywhere from 29 AU. Yes, sometimes it's closer than Neptune, all the way out to... 49 AU, so just at the end of the Kuiper Belt proper. Here we can see Pluto's orbit reaching all the way out to the edge of the Kuiper Belt proper, but beyond that is the scattered disk. The Kuiper Belt is a main source of comets, however, there is something even further beyond that called the Oort cloud that also produces comets. So the periodic ones that come about every 200 years come from the Kuiper Belt main. And then things beyond that that are longer than 200 years come from the scatter disk or the Oort cloud. So here we can see the solar system and the Kuiper belt way out here outside of Neptune. And then here, way out here, is the Oort cloud. And this area is going to be the scatter disk. To help our understanding a little bit more, let's look at something that we know of, which is the Voyager spacecraft. Voyager 1 is the furthest man-made object from Earth. It was launched in 1977 and is on its way out of our solar system. We believe Voyager 1 has just passed through something called the heliopause, which is where the solar winds sent out from the sun encounter the interstellar winds and create a termination shock, which is a bowing of the two different wind powers, we'll call it. And Voyager is on its way through that. We believe it just went through it. And Voyager 2 is on its way there as well. But you can see the Kuiper Belt extends beyond the heliopause. And so our comet is still from out here. So let's pull up a real model of the solar system so we can understand just how obscenely far away this comet has traveled. So here we are looking at Earth right here, this blue orbit. And you can see we're about... No, oh, just slightly over one astronomical unit away. Like I said, one AU is the average from the sun to the Earth. But we're going to have to measure the orbit of the comet in light days, which is the distance light travels in one Earth day. So to calculate that, we will come here and 
like I said, it's going out to 720 AU, which is just over four light days. So it will take light from the comet at its furthest distance away four days to reach us. So again, this is the number we need to watch. And let's just start backing out here. So there we're at one light hour at Jupiter. And we've just reached Neptune's orbit. And we're currently at Pluto's orbit at five light hours. So we're not even at one light day yet. These lines are the Voyagers. So this one is Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. So let's see if we can track down how far away those are. You can see they've traveled a long ways. So they're currently sitting at just shy of one light day. So Neptune, Pluto, Earth is way down in here. And we aren't even a quarter of the way to where this comet came from. So let's keep going out. Right about there. So we're currently at the orbit where this comet will start heading back into the solar system in about 3,400 years. But just to put things into perspective even more, let's take a look at that Oort cloud. So this Oort sphere is the extreme outer limit of where the sun is the primary influence on bodies orbiting it. Anything beyond that is going to be influenced by something else. So let's zoom outside that Oort sphere where comets do come from. There we go. And we're looking at roughly one light year in size. So at this distance, we can't even see the planet's orbits. There's the comet's orbit. And all the way back into this planetary solar system. So how did Comet C slash 2020 F3 Neowise get its unique name? Well, in the world of comets, it's not really that unique. The C slash means it's a non-periodic comet, which basically means any comet with an orbital period greater than 200 years, or has been observed to pass by the sun more than once, or it has an escape velocity that's been measured. The 2020 means that it was found in the year 2020. That's pretty simple. The F means that it was found in the second half of March. So each month is divided into two, starting with January 1st half that's labeled A, January 2nd half is labeled B, February 1st half is labeled C, etc. So F is the second half of March. And then three means it's the third comet found in the F period. Neowise is the telescope that discovered it. Technically, it's the WISE telescope the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, but when its primary mission ended, it was repurposed into a Near-Earth Object Telescope, the NEO, Near-Earth Object. And it's been used to discover comets and asteroids that could potentially come close to Earth. It looks like I may have waited too long. The sun is starting to come up, and I think the area of the sky that I need to be looking is getting pretty light, so I'm gonna stop talking and try to find a place to stop and try to point a camera, and see if we can see it. Well, unfortunately, I think a cloud is right where the comet is. I'm trying. I don't know how well you can see that. Might be able to see it on my phone better. See that cloud right in the middle? I think the comet is right behind there. I'm running an astrophotography shot on it to see if it can penetrate the clouds and find where it's at. I don't see anything that looks like a comet. That's Venus and according to the 
guides, it says it should be somewhere in this region. I think it's probably right behind that cloud. Dang it. Well, I'm gonna keep trying over the next couple of days. Apparently soon in the next few days, it's going to be visible just after sunset over in the northwestern part of the sky. And there's always a chance that it could just break up and that'd be that. <laughs> All right, so new day, new try. Uh, it is out. So let me show you what I've been up to first before we look at the comet. So I've been shooting all night here. So I've got my table set up here with the Star Tracker software and then my Star Tracker with my camera. And I've been shooting the M57 Ring Nebula. It's pretty cool looking. I don't want to screw up my shot, so I'll bring the light away from there. Let's go take a look at the comet. It's really neat. <laughs> so we'll let this shot finish and then I'll stop here. You see that? And I can see it just barely. I mean, I've been staring into this bright light so I can't see it a whole lot, but. Oh yeah. Well, once I, my, my vision came back. Yeah, I can totally see it. It's awesome. It's been, the last one I saw with my own eyes was what that hail bop or something, the one that people thought was an alien spaceship and they committed mass suicide so that their bodies would go up to the spaceship. Yeah, it was a stupid thing. Anyway, this one's really neat. Let me see if I can get some video of it. All right, let's see here. Try and dial this in. Yeah, you see that? Look at that. <laughs> that is live. It is July 12th at 4.23 in the morning. And that is Comet C 2020 F3 Neowise. <laughs> at this point, you probably want to know how you can see the comet for yourself. So let's take a look at Stellarium, which is a website or an app, and it lets you track astronomical objects based on where you are in the world. I'm currently looking at the night that this video is going to go up, July 15th, 2020, which is about the first night that you're going to be able to see it after sunset instead of having to get up in the morning to see it. So I'm looking north and the comet's going to be over here after sunset, and I've got it set to 9 o'clock right now. So let's bump that ahead one hour to after sunset. And there is the comet showing up. And if we go slowly here, you can see that it's going to start going down past the horizon. So by 11 o'clock, it might be pretty hard to see. I'm at Lincoln, Nebraska, which is about 40 degrees latitude. So this is why right now you're still probably not going to be able to see it until just before daylight or just after sunset. So it's coming back up now on the morning of the 16th and you could still come and see it over here just before the sun comes up. What I want to show you is the path that the comet is going to take over the next couple of weeks as it gets easier to see after sunset. Also on July 22nd it's going to make its closest approach to Earth. So I want to turn off the atmosphere so you can kind of see the path that the comet takes. So remember this is daytime uh, so you won't be able to see this but you can see that it just sits here and rotates around the north there's a North Star. But let's get closer to that 22nd date here. Let's turn the atmosphere back on. So there it's 9 o'clock and then the sun would set. You can see it's higher up than it was on the 15th tonight. And so as we go here, you're going to be able to see it for a couple more hours. So we've seen it for two hours here compared to the 15th that is already below the horizon. On July 22nd, its closest approach, you should have a pretty good view of it for about three hours before it goes below the horizon. So I should clarify that with my naked eye, I can just make out the nucleus. Uh, it's just more of a bright spot than an actual point. You're seeing it much better on the camera than I am. And I can see kind of a wispy tail going up. I can see it better if I don't focus directly on it, but even with a cheap pair of binoculars like these $40 Bushnell ones. Uh, that's enough for me to see the 
sharp glowing nucleus plus a lot of the tail. And I can see it with these at least as well as you can see it there, but it's zoomed in. So get out, go see it. It's awesome. Stop by Walmart and pick up some cheap binoculars if you want and uh, go see this because it's not very often you get to see a comet with your naked eye. Well, that's going to do it for this Whatever Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed seeing the comet and learning a little bit about it. I find this stuff really fun. It's kind of pointless in the world, but it's just neat to think of what's out there. If you want to see more Whatever Wednesday type stuff, then subscribe to the channel. If you want to see more content creator focused videos every Friday or maybe Saturday if I'm late, subscribe for that. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. But until next time, I'm doing what I love. Keep doing what you love. Thanks for watching.